Welcome to MSPTDA video number 11. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about importing SQL data using Power Query, and we want to import it into Excel and into Power BI Desktop. Now, what's SQL data and what's an SQL database? An SQL database is a relational database that uses SQL code that is structured query language to query or communicate with the database. Now, in our class, we'll use Power Query to generate the M code that allows us to connect to an SQL database and extract data from that database. Our class is not about learning how to write SQL code. However, I will show you one example later in this video of how, if you know how to write SQL code, how to put it into Power Query to get Power Query to send it back to the SQL database. Now, to take a brief look at an SQL database, I'm using Microsoft's program SSMS to look into this database. The name of the database we're going to have to connect to, which is an online SQL database, is Boomerang. For this video, we're going to have to pull the tables F transaction and D product. Later in this class, we'll pull more tables and create a full data model. For this video, we're going to make two transformations in Excel, one using Power Query user interface, the other using SQL. Then we'll switch over to Power BI Desktop and pull data into Power BI Desktop. Now here is a look at the F transaction table, date, website, product, quantity, revenue, discount, and some other columns. Here's D product table, product, retail price, and a bunch of other columns. Now let's go back over to Excel to start our first importing of SQL data. Now to take a look at the one, two transformations we're going to do in Excel using Power Query, these are the two results they'll be exactly the same results. One is done with Power Query User Interface. The other is done with SQL. And our goal is to pull data from both F transaction and D products, include only transactions where the quantity sold is greater than or equal to 100, calculate net revenue, group by product to get total net revenue, include only group by aggregations that are greater than 100,000, and then sort the product column. So we're using Power Query to import and transform to get these two reports. Now over here in the start file, these are going to be our credentials to connect to our SQL database. And if we're using Power Query user interface or typing your own SQL code, we want to consider these important points. Now, when we're using the Power Query user interface, the steps we create are sent back to the SQL database. This is called query folding. And this is because an SQL database is often more efficient, meaning the performance or the speed of the query, than Power Query. Wow, that's pretty cool. So whatever we do over here in Power Query, Power Query is programmed to send it back. And because we're connecting to an SQL database, the transformations, when possible, will be performed at the database. Now, some Power Query features like custom M code, and we've been doing a lot of that lately, and functions like the table unpivot function cannot be understood by the SQL database. So they will not be sent back. They'll be performed natively in Power Query. Also, if you want to prevent query folding, you use the table.buffer function. For typing your own code, unless you're a master SQL coder, it's usually more efficient to use the Power Query user interface. Hey, as Miguel Escobar and Ken Pauls in their book says, unless you're an SQL ninja, don't bother typing the code. But for convenience, some people like to write SQL code. It's totally possible. So we'll see how to do that. Now let's scroll over to the side. All right, we'll create our Power Query user interface solution first. To connect to an SQL database, we go up to Data, over to Get and Transform, Get Data from Database. And there's a few different options for SQL databases. This is the one we're going to use. There are others, including other Microsoft services and other databases. Even over in Azure, we have 
SQL database. And we want to select the first option. This is the SQL Server Database dialog box. We want to select Advanced Options. Now, this dialog box looks the same or similar for most of the database connections in Power Query. So we need to list what server computer we're pointing to. We're pointing to pond.highline.edu. The database in that server computer is called Boomerang. Now, when we're pointing to that database, if something's going on in the database, it may take a long time to connect. So we can specify in minutes how long we're willing to wait. We're going to wait one minute before a timeout. Now, this is where you write your SQL code. We're not writing any now. We're going to use the Power Query user interface. Now, our goal is to take the transaction table and get from a related table the retail price. So we definitely want to check Include Relationship Columns. Now, normally, if you're importing the fact tables and the dimension tables, you'd uncheck this and build your relationships in the data model. But for us, we want that checked. Now, when I click OK, it's going to ask for my username and password. Click OK. Now, we're going to connect to a database. Our username is Excel is fun, all lower cases. Our password is capital E, X-C-E-L, capital I-S, capital F-U-N, explanation point. That password is listed in the PDF notes and in the Excel workbook. Now, we can choose which level, either the server or just the database. We're going to choose just the database. Now, I'm going to click Connect. Now, it's going to tell us that we're unable to connect in an encrypted way. That is fine. I'm going to click OK. This is our navigator step. And this should look very similar to what we did with Excel and Access, because we have multiple objects in this database. Now, later we'll select this and select multiple tables. But all we want is F transactions. Now I want to go down and click Edit. This brings me into the Power Query Editor. I want to come over and rename this. Product Report PQ User Interface and Enter. Now I want to go back to Source. And we can see there's an M code function called SQL Database. There's the server. There's the database. And there's our timeout code. And the SQL Database returns a table with objects and attributes. We've seen similar tables earlier in the class for our source data. Now notice that transactions from the item column, that's the table we want. And we want the schema DOB. So the navigation step, which is our lookup step, hey, there's the source table. In curly brackets, that's look up the row. And in square brackets, that's look up the column. And sure enough, it delivers our F transaction table. Now we're going to scroll over. And actually, the first step is from the product column. I'm going to use expand. These are the related columns from the product table. I want to uncheck everything. I only need to use retail price as part of our net revenue calculation. Click OK. Now, part of this transformation and query is we need to filter quantity to only show quantities 100 or more. So down to number filters. We want to go down to please include greater than or equal to. And we're going to hard code in 100. Click OK. Now, look at that. There's our table.select rows greater than 100. Now, we have quantity. We have our retail price over there and our revenue discount. Now, this is the discount amount. So we're going to have to take 1 minus that and multiply it by quantity and price. We're going to do that by adding a column, custom column. The name of the column will be net revenue. Now we come down right at the bottom. I'm going to double click retail price times quantity, double click, times in parentheses 1 minus, double click revenue discount, close parentheses. Now, some of the earlier examples in the class we rounded. We're not going to round here. Click OK. Now, we can use this column and scroll over and product to group by product and aggregate our new custom column. Right click, group by. 
group by product will give us a unique list of product names, the new column name, the aggregation will be sum, and we're going to work on our new net revenue column. Now when I click OK, I have a unique list of products and all of the aggregations. Now one of the other criteria for this report is that once we get our aggregations and our group by step, we need to filter this to only include rows where the numbers are greater than or equal to 100,000. Now when I click OK, there's another table dot select rows. Now we have one last step. We're going to sort the product column ascending. There's our table dot sort function. These are all the steps created using the Power Query user interface. They will be sent back. And if possible, they will be executed and the transformation will take place over in the SQL database. Now we're ready to go to Home, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. Now the table is fine. Existing L11 is fine. Click OK. We can see over in the Queries and Connections, 19 rows loaded. There's our report, all using the Power Query user interface. Now most of the time, that's what we want to do. But if you like writing SQL code, we'll go ahead and see how to do that. Well, we go to the same place, Data, Get Data, From Database, SQL Server. We put in our credentials, and we write our SQL statement here. And here's the code we're going to use. Please select the product column. And because the product column exists in both tables, we have to preface it with the actual table name, dot product, comma, and then we specify our aggregate calculation just as we did in Power Query. But in SQL, it comes in the first line with the sum function wrapped around it. Then we use as, and that's the name of the new column. Then we say from which tables. Well, F transactions is one of the table. But guess what? We're going to have to explicitly join. So we say join with D product. And because there's a relationship between these tables one to many, we can simply say on and list the two columns as equal. Notice for both of these product columns, we had to preface it with our table name. Where? That's actually filtering the quantity column in the F transactions table. Group by, we simply say group by product. Because there's an aggregation already in the first line, it will know to do that aggregation for each unique item in the product column. Then because we want to filter the result, we say having. And we repeat the aggregate calculation and give it our comparative operator and limit. Finally, we say order by. And because the default is ascending, we simply list the product name followed by a semicolon. When I click OK, the actual finished report will be returned to Power Query. So I click OK. And there it is. I'm going to click Edit. Now I'm going to name this query something like Product Report Typed SQL Code. Now I do want to go look at the first step here. We could also go up and look at Advanced Editor. But here it is, SQL Database. Well, there's the server. There's the database. And look at that. In square brackets, there's a query. And the query's all in double quotes. Now, if you want to change the query, you could edit it up here. But probably it's easier to come back to the gear icon and, and double click. And you can edit it here. But let's take a look here. It lists the select statement. And when it gets to a line feed, that's line feed in Power Query, pound, and then in parentheses, LF. And so for each one of our steps, there's a line feed. Finally double quote at the end, and there's our time out. Now I'm going to close and load, close and load to existing. And it looks like it has the right place. 011, click OK. Now we have both of our reports, user interface, SQL. Now, of course, most of the time we're going to be doing Power Query user interface. Because of course, when possible, those steps will be sent back to the SQL database. But if you want to write code, it's totally possible. Now I'm going to close this Excel file, and we're going to open up Power BI Desktop. Now Power BI Desktop, the free download, I just opened up a blank workbook and saved it. We go up to Get Data if we're trying to connect to an SQL database. And look at that. It's right there, one of the first options. 
So I'm going to select that. This looks exactly the same except for one big difference. There's import and direct query. Now, direct query allows you to connect to an SQL database, and you do not import the data. Here, of course, the data is brought into the file. If you use this, performance can be very slow sometimes, because every time you do a query or change something in one of your visualizations, it has to send that request back to the SQL database. Now, the real reason that this exists is because for really big data, like maybe you have a gigabyte of data you're trying to import, that can be a problem in terms of importing. So then you want to use direct query. Now, there's some other considerations also, like some of the amazing time intelligence functions that we'll learn in DAX don't work if you use direct query. Because remember, some of the things that we do in Power Query and Power BI Desktop and DAX also, if you try to send that back to an SQL database, it might not understand. Now, there's a link below in the comments and in the PDF notes from Microsoft about all the things you want to consider if you use direct query. We don't have anything big enough in this class, so we're simply going to import. I went ahead and put my credentials, put a minute timeout. I'm going to uncheck this because I do not want related columns. Now I'm going to click OK. Here's the navigator. We want to select F transactions, D product, and D country. I'm going to select Edit to bring it into the Power Query Editor. Now we have one, two, three different separate queries. But again, over here, Source, it's doing the same thing. And we can see one extra step here, create navigation properties equal false. That's in the square brackets with our timeout command because we didn't want related columns. And of course, there's our table, and navigation looks up the correct three tables. If I select each table, I can see a different lookup formula. I'm going to click this Refresh. It looks like it's been two days since I touched this database. Now, you can do any transformations you want. I'm just looking through and verifying. The columns are there. The data types are there. Those are looking good. D country are looking good. Now, over here, it's Close and Apply. So I'm going to select Close and Apply. And this will import the tables into the columnar database in the data model. I click Close and Apply. You can see it's chugging through all of the rows. Now, if we come over on the left, because we did an import and not a direct query, I can actually look at the tables. Over here, there's country, product, and F transactions. If we go to relationships, oh, look at that. It detected one of the relationships. We're not going to do anything with this right now. Actually, we will start talking about Power Pivot data modeling, which is the same over here in Power BI Desktop in about two videos. All we've done here is we went ahead and imported the tables. So all we did up in Edit Queries was Source and Navigation. All right, that was a lot of fun with connecting to an SQL database, either over here using Power Query in Power BI Desktop, or over here in Excel where we use Power Query User Interface and SQL Code. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including we'll have probably one, maybe two more Power Query videos, and then we'll jump into the introduction to Power Pivot and data modeling. All right, we'll see you next video.